Keyshawn, the defense uh, kind of got back to its usual ways against Toledo. Uh, what, what was successful for you guys going into that game? Uh, same thing that's always made us the defense we are since I've been here since um, the years as defense have been good, just playing hard, playing fast, playing physical. So it always comes down to um, being the most physical team on the field. And it's one thing we preach every week um, and we take pride in. So I, I, I mean, I think it's something we did the first couple games, maybe not to the best of our ability. And you know what I'm saying? The result um, of those games was what it was. But I think um, last game, we looked more, as you said, like ourselves. What do you have to prepare for differently this week, knowing that Boise State changed its offensive coordinator and its quarterback? Um, nothing. I think we've seen a mobile quarterback. At the end of the day, football is football. We, we go in those white lines, and there's not much that we haven't seen, especially uh, having a veteran group of guys on defense as we do. Um, they got a mobile quarterback. They got a good running back, decent O line, um, good good skill position. They're a good offense. They're a good team, and everything they do, we've seen before. So it's nothing new, but uh, we maybe have to reinforce some things, but that's obviously in house. <laughs> they're, they're playing a young quarterback when he goes to the line of scrimmage and looks at you guys and pre-snap reads and all the stuff that you execute as a ball of snap. Can you see in the eyes of a young quarterback when suddenly? He's panic-stricken and he's in trouble because of how dynamic you guys are? Uh, I don't know. I've never played quarterback, so I wouldn't know. But I, I know when I was young and I'd go out there and I'm I was a true freshman, I'm just eyes big and it, it, not scared, but it's just it's definitely a different feeling. Um, I don't think he'll be scared. I think he's ready to play. He's on scholarship just like we're on scholarship. He, he's out there trying to play football and play to the best of his ability as a um, – just like us, so I, I think he'll be ready, regardless if he is or not. We'll be ready. Mark, what is the biggest challenge in your mind of getting the passing game going, and how important is it that you guys collectively do that so you're not one-dimensional offensively? Yeah, I mean, obviously we had the running game going, and we pride ourselves here on that Nasdaq football. But getting that passing game going, you saw what happened with the two-minute drive at the end there. Uh, Braxton really got it going. O line held up a, their part up front. And uh, I think once we get into that rhythm, it really shows there. I mean, on that last drive, how we were able to get down the field and put some points up on the board. Can, can it, you turn around something where, asking Coach Hope, you mentioned a range of things that probably you guys need to work on to get better at. When it is more of a laundry list of things, can, it, can that get turned around pretty quickly in a week or two, or is that just take more time? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, it's everyone on the offense. It starts on the whole line. And, Look how they went in that two-minute drill. And I mean, the whole game, they were able to protect for the quarterback, which gave Braxton some time to get the ball out there. And I mean, it's something we'll work on every week in practice, but we're continuing to get better every week. And that's something I'm sure we'll see in this upcoming game and going on forward in the rest of the season. Mark, you got involved in the passing game against Toledo. I think you had four catches, but they were very short yardage catches. How do you see yourself properly progressing to get more downfield and get cat, uh, bigger passing plays? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we kind of just kept it short game. We were doing a lot of quick game there. So in my eyes, I need to get upfield. But I mean, that's with everybody. I mean, Jesse was throwing a little hitch. We love throwing to him, get him, break loose, feed it to Tyrell, Makai Shaw, all those guys. But I mean, again, it all starts up front and being able to have that protection, having Braxton to get the drop back time that he needs, and then throwing the ball out and working from there. So you're, you're new to, to the program, obviously, it's your first year. How has your time at San Diego State been so far? I mean, Talk about Aztec football, it takes all 11. I, I mean, I'll continue to say it, but with our O-line being able to hang in there, I mean, it's just not, it's, it's different. But it's nice to have Braxton being able to be back there and throw out all these weapons that we have out there. Well, the route's different because Braxton has a tendency to get out of the pocket and run the football. Do you run short, short routes, or do you need to be more creative if he's starting to move the pocket because he's in trouble? I wouldn't say so. I think we've kept the scheme pretty much the same, and we'll give Braxton some leniency here and there. I mean, obviously, he's a heck of an athlete, but when you also have other athletes on the field, like look at our running back room and our receiver room, I mean, you have many athletes out there, and Tyrell Shavers, Jesse Matthews, and then the running back room, you can go on and on. That, that's got a depth that we've solidified here. So I think, I don't know if that answers your question, but. 
are you stunned that the passing game is ranked 130th in the nation out of 131 teams? You could say that. Uh, I mean, but we'll, I believe that we will get back up there and we'll start throwing for a lot more. Keisha, what do you remember about playing in Boise? I want to say the last time you played in Boise, you were a freshman, right? 2018, you that long run. It was one of the first touches of his career, I want to say. Uh, what do you remember from playing in Boise? Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, it's a hostile environment, to say the least. They're, those are proud fans over there. They're a proud team. They take pride in what they do. They take pride in the blue. Um, but it, it was it was definitely fun. It was a welcome to college moment for me. It was 30,000 people. The stadium is very vibrant. All you could smell is funnel cakes. And um, <laughs> it, was, it, was a fun, it was a fun environment, especially to go in there on the road to and, and pull out the win that we did. Um, it was definitely fun, and, and I'm sure it'll be the same on Friday night. So, looking forward to it. Yeah, how much are you, Mark, as well, looking forward to the opportunity Friday night, Boise, you know, two of the premier programs in, the, in this league getting together? It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Obviously, first year here, Boise is a big rivalry game, is from what I've heard. So, just treat it like every other week. But I'm really excited to get out there and see what happens. Keyshawn, it's a weird field to be on blue turf. Uh, uh, nah, like I said earlier, football is football. As long as we step in the, uh, the white lines, are always white. It doesn't matter what what field you go to, the, the white lines are white, and it's 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 kind of idiotic to say, but it's true. So it it doesn't feel any different when you go out there. As soon as you get that adrenaline in you, and you see them, and knowing that you're looking across the field, and they want to beat us, it just that drive and that that hunger gets back in you, and it's all football, it's all business. So it, it it's definitely odd. To say the least, when you go out there and we're not, maybe when we go out there and do our walkthrough and you realize, like, wow, the turf is really blue. Like, they play on this. It's, it's different, but when it's ready, when it's time to go, we're ready to go. Did you get one of those funnel cakes in 2018? No, nah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't play too many snaps. I, like I said, I was a, the true freshman, but uh, I could remember vividly to this day. I remember just smelling funnel cakes for three hours straight. <laughs> uh, for both of you guys, just the significance of this game. Obviously, start fresh, Mountain West. You guys talked about win 22. Uh, what could it do for you guys to get off on the right foot Friday? Uh, it could definitely be a nice pick me up, but I don't. I mean, I don't necessarily think we need a pick me up. But it's just a, a fresh start. The first four games, or three games we played, um, non-conference games. They're important, but this is really what it's about, is conference and winning a conference championship. So it'll just propel us to, to get to where we want to go and where we believe we're going to go. Again, those first four games, I mean, they're in the past. will happen, happen, and we can, we can work off that. But these next eight games, conference plays, it's all about that win 22 at this point. So that's what we're focused on. We're just focused on the future. Keyshawn, what, what's the value of playing Power 5 schools? And getting smoked. What do, you, what, what do you get out of it? I'm not just talking about San Diego State, but we've looked at all these non conference games and horribly lopsided. People are taking terrible beatings. What's the value from a player's perspective to go play that type of schedule? I don't necessarily think there's a value in playing a Power Five team against Smoke. I think there's a value in playing any team in any conference and losing. I think that's where we learn more about our team, more about um, our program. Just we learned from things that we did do right, things that we didn't do right. So I don't necessarily think it's a conference thing. I think we enjoy playing those conferences just because maybe the lack of um, respect that we get from those conferences, that I think we enjoy that. But from a losing aspect, it, there's no plus or advantage from losing to any conference or any team. But um, like I said, just learning from any loss is what we appreciate. Obviously, we don't want to lose, but if we do, you got to learn from it, so. Keyshawn, you guys played two Friday night road games last year and won both. Has that has the short week kind of become normal by now, or is it still kind of a different field throughout the week as you're preparing? It's definitely different, just not having that day to prepare your body and, and get a little extra treatment or that extra day of film and preparation. It's different, but like you said, last year we did it. I remember it was San Jose and UNLV, I believe. and. Um, it's not necessarily something that's normal, but it, we got to deal with it. We got to play on Friday. We can't push the game back. So um, we come in here, take it with a grain of salt, come get prepared, and uh, get ready to go. Does it remind you of high school at all? Being back on 
A little bit, a little bit. It's nice because you get that Saturday and Sunday off. Just like I said, sometimes your body needs it, especially I'm getting a little older in my college career, so. <laughs> and Mark, what went into the decision to leave Washington? Why state? And what about the Huskies and what they're doing with that quarterback? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot behind that. And some of it was uh, the family aspect side, but uh, I eventually did leave there. It just wasn't the right fit for myself. Um, and what they're doing right now is amazing. I'm, I'm really happy with them. Still very close with some of those uh, players up there. I had roommates that played up there, and I'm happy for them. But I'm even more happy about where I am right now.